The terror attacks in Brussels have seen anti-Islamic sentiment flare up across Europe. In the Spanish capital, a far-right group targeted a mosque. Pictures posted online show activists lighting flares on the bridge opposite the building. They also hung a sign reading, Today Brussels, Tomorrow Madrid? Question mark. Some protesters also claim the mosque provides financing to Islamic State. Meanwhile, in Britain, the latest polls show that the campaign to leave the European Union has gained more support following Tuesday's tragic events in Belgium. Lax border controls and the refugee crisis are among the main concerns of the Leave campaigners. Earlier, Andrew Farmer spoke with Mo Anzar, a political and social commentator, and Tony Bugle from the English Democrats' party. I think the difficulty we have is that when we look at the increasing migrant and refugee problem in Europe, there are growing calls in, in Europe, understandably, and they're pointing at the refugees, they're pointing at the migrant communities and saying, you're the problem. In fact, when we look at um, the attacks in the US, when we look at 9-11, we look at uh, the Charlie Hebdo, we look at Paris, when we look at this whole array, these are homegrown extremists and homegrown terrorism. This has nothing to do with refugees. We do have extremists coming in through mass immigration. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the people of this country have a right to feel safe. They don't feel safe, and the, the government have a duty of care to the people of this country, regardless of colour, creed, creation or faith. They have a right to feel safe, and they don't. And a mass immigration with an open border policy is insanity. I just look, want to ask, look. Stop Islam <laughs> is a hashtag that came out just after these attacks. It does show, it, it's trended pretty strongly, and it does show that people are genuinely concerned. Yes don't they about the Muslim community however you want to frame it there is genuine concern every time we've seen terrorist incidents occur across Europe we've seen a massive backlash against Muslims the backlash we've seen include things like the hashtag stop Islam but have included and, and who are targeted we've seen old men coming back from the mosque being murdered on the streets uh, of Britain and in Europe, we've seen fire bombings on mosques. We've seen pigs being left there? outside mosques. We've seen Muslim women with hijabs having the hijabs pulled off, not, and we've, we've seen Muslim here. women being targeted here. and being attacked. You, you share more in common. You are part of the problem the because you share more it. in common would, with the domestic far right. With, than well, well, then leave, you know then leave the English Democrats and join wholeheartedly and condemn any attack on any Muslim. I how can you work with a far right organisation then? Then how can you work how can you work with a neo fascist and pro Nazi organization? You're being ridiculous. I will condemn any violence towards any Muslim for no good reason. Of course I will condemn it. Of course it's not acceptable. But what nobody seems to want to say is how many non Muslims are attacked. Where's the condemnation for that? If anybody dare say anything that is even remotely derogatory or a criticism of Islam, we're automatically targeted and told we are far-right extremists. I am not far-right, Mo. I'm just not far-wrong. And that's what you hate the most, is that people are speaking up. And Muslims Nicola. will more likely stand with me against somebody like you, because you don't represent them. Look, I've faced extremists wherever they are, and I'm telling you, the English Democrats are part of a neo-fascist movement across Europe. They're part of the fright. If you genuinely you're want to engage you with don't communities, you your, don't own you, you director, your own communications director, your own communications director... Come along, come along and meet the English Democrats. What Mo despises more than anything else, there is a problem, and the problem is there is mass immigration, and whether we like it or not, the crimes being committed right now are being done in the name of Islam. Whether whether you are doing it or not is irrelevant. It is being done in that name. So how, how, how are we supposed to react? Are we supposed to sit there and go, oh, it's OK, all these attacks have happened, but we'll welcome more in. You need to shut the border, get it under control, then we can target the homegrown terrorists, we can flush out the extremists in the country, then we can deal with the problem, then we can have controlled immigration, and then we can perhaps see perhaps what would be really nice is see some Christians who are being slaughtered in their masses. Maybe we should open the doors to them, because I don't see many of them coming into the country. Europe's border controls are also a major concern amongst leaders now. Here's what the French Prime Minister had to say. The thing that France, and not only France, wants to see, referring to all the governments and the European Commission, strict, stringent controls on the external borders and deployment of European border guards. 
What's transpired that Turkey had warned Europe about one of the Brussels attackers. President Erdogan says Ankara arrested the suspect in the summertime and deported him, notifying Belgium that he'd been radicalised abroad. Three men have now been named as suicide bombers in the Brussels attacks. All of them had in fact surfaced already on the police's radar as having links to the Paris attackers. DNA belonging to Salah Abdeslam, the prime suspect in November's atrocities, was found in a flat rented by two of them. While the third person is thought to have gone to Hungary and Austria in the same car as Abdeslam in September last year and has been wanted for months as a suspected bomb maker in the Paris attacks. Well, we spoke to some former senior intelligence and police figures. They told us that a lack of coordination between European and global security forces could be a major factor in the failure to prevent the attacks. There's insufficient coordination between Europe's special services. We are aware of that. When we managed to prevent a terror attack, we learned that everything was already known. We should recognize that. Collaboration on this matter is ineffective. Europol keeps on working, but it's not doing everything we want it to. We should strengthen cooperation with all our colleagues from all foreign special services. We know ISIS stated that they are going to infiltrate in these migrants that are coming into Europe and also those that are going to come into the United States. So. You know, we, we, we have to stop having these excuses and we have to stop apologizing for the political correctness that I see is just running rampant. And we do believe that this latest attack in Brussels was a result of the capture of the individual and then it set off a chain of events. And I think that we're going to actually see more of these. In fact, I know we're going to see more of these. I've been saying this for a long time. We're going to see more of these attacks until we do more against this uh, enemy that we face. Frankly, I'm sick of it. I am sick of it because I know that more can be done. We cannot have an excuse. We cannot allow some enemy to, to take the uh, initiative away from the, the international community, which is exactly what they're doing. They have done that. This latest attack is another demonstration of their strategic initiative that they have. And we, we are on our heels, if not on our knees. And this, this includes the entire international community to include uh, Russia, the United States. And we have to try to figure out how do we combine the United States national security strategy along with, uh, with Russia's national security strategy, despite all the challenges that we face with places like, you know, Eastern Europe and Ukraine, etc. We have to figure out how do we fight this enemy. Well, questions are also being raised over the amount of time it took Belgian police to find and arrest Paris attacker Salah Abdeslam. He was eventually caught just 300 metres from where he had lived before the attacks. It took police four months to locate him. Following the terrorist attacks last November in Paris, investigators were led to this building where they found the fingerprints of Salah Abdeslam, who was one of the surviving members of that attack. Now, investigators believe that most of the planning for the Paris attacks took place here in Brussels, and it led to tensions between French and Belgian investigators, with the French suggesting that their counterparts here in Brussels were lax in tracking the activities of militants who had returned from fighting for ISIS in Syria. For four months, Abdus Salam avoided being arrested. He was eventually caught in this building, just hundreds of meters away from another building where his fingerprints were found. Originally, there were rumors that he had fled to Syria, like hundreds of other men from this part of town. Don't you think it's kind of bizarre that this kind of person didn't get caught for four months? He did not even leave the area. How can that be possible? Are the police totally useless or what? That's what creates the atmosphere of terror. Of course, these days, with new technology, you can catch people easily. But sometimes, the person hides in the place where you least expect them to be. I'm not surprised. The police are doing whatever they can. The authorities are not being given enough resources, and they're running low on personnel. For me, that is the principal reason why they didn't catch him sooner. In my opinion, you can't blame the police for everything that happened. Over the past few days, some satirical online publications have been making fun of the fact that Abdus Salam was hiding almost literally under the noses of the authorities. The Nord Press magazine made a headline saying that Abdus Salam has checked in via the Facebook 
safety check to let everyone know that he's OK. Perhaps it's part of the Belgian sense of humour to be able to laugh at themselves at a time of such tragedy. Lisa Ali, RT, in Brussels. The news continues here on RT International right after this.